say again? Yep, no butter on the way. Hello and welcome once again to the examiner's coverage of the 2020 Cork Senior A Hurling Championship. We are live with you this evening from an overcast parky rin and the Group 1 meeting, the decisive Group 1 meeting of Cloyne and Noosestown. Uh, both sides one win and one defeat in their opening two games. They're behind the 100 percenters in the group. That's Canturk and both chasing that coveted second spot this evening and with that a place in the quarterfinals. Des Curran delighted to have uh, Mark Landers, All-Ireland winning captain and two-time county champion with him McKilly alongside. We will get Mark's opening thoughts in just a moment. But a First of all, we'll start by hearing from both camps a little bit earlier on. I spoke to uh, Cloyne's uh, selector, John O'Lamasny, and also to the Newcestown manager, Jim O'Sullivan. John, looking at the two games in the group that you played so far, I suppose a disappointing first day against Canturk, but much better against Killa. I just say that obviously, you know, we were desperately disappointed against Canturk. I mean, we didn't get to the pitch of the game, uh, you know, and, and we, we reviewed that seriously afterwards. And, and, you know, we packed it up effectively then because, you know, we had to move forward. And yeah, it was a big improvement against Killa. In what areas in particular were you happier with how the second day went? Well, well I think this, to be honest with you, overall, you know, I think our work rate and our commitment really was somewhat lacking against Canturk. Maybe that you can put that down to first game, but... It was the same for both teams and, and you know, I think we got to the grips of the game early on and, and uh, we maintained that momentum right throughout the game against Killer. And now to this game against Noosestown and you're coming into it knowing you have to win, which clarifies everything really for the players, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's an ideal situation, really, Des. Like, it's, it's win or take all today, really. I mean, you can't ask for anything better than that. You win the game today, you're in the quarter-final, you lose the game today and you're out. But both teams, well, actually, New System probably a draw will, will, will get them through. But from our perspective, we have to win the game today and that's what we've been focusing on and that's it's a winner's take all, as I say, today. And just a word finally on New System. Well, Newcastle have to go into this as favourites, really. Newcastle ran Kentuck very close. We were well beaten by Kentuck. Uh, we don't underestimate the task ahead of us, but at the same time, I feel if, if our lads will play to their ability and bring their talent to, to bear here, out here, and, and the right commitment, I think, will be there thereabouts. Raring to go. Raring to go. Bring it on. Jim, you've just updated me on the team news and one major blow. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, Carl Keane there got, uh, picked up an injury uh, against Castlehaven. He got six stitches in the shin bone, so uh, he's not uh, considered for today. So it's a big blow to us, but you know, we have a panel, and that's what the panel is for. And um, Jimmy Keller is coming centre forward, and uh, hopefully Jimmy will do a job for us. Give us your thoughts on the two games in the group so far. Um, double scores win the opening day against Killa, and then ran Kanturk very close in the second game. We did, um, I suppose, but in, in the two games, um, our, our biggest um, downfall was, um, I suppose, we started poorly. We started poorly against um, Killa, but we recovered just before half-time. In Kent, against Kentork, we went down eight points. Um, it was a big ass to come back, but we brought him down to two points at the end, and uh, it just was too much for us uh, against a very good Kentork team, in fairness. You had that spell against Kentork, was it in three minutes you shipped the, th the, 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 or in ten minutes you shipped the three goals, which was obviously gave you a lot to do then? Yeah, it was, I think it was in the 10th and 20th minute we, we um, gave away three goals. Um, they probably ran at us. Um, but uh, hopefully that won't happen today and we're trying to alleviate that now, really. Just going through your panel, it's a double figures and then some in terms of dual senior players. and It's been a punishing schedule. How, how welcome was the, the two-week break, if we can call it a break, coming into this game? Well, there's, um, I suppose I think we're playing six out of seven weeks and I think there's 12 players starting both teams. Um, I know this year is probably unique um, in, in, due, due to the circumstances. 
Um, I like the format of the hurling football championships, but I suppose, you know, when you're a dual club and you have so many um, um, players, you know, over both teams, it is it is punishing. You know, six out of seven weeks, you're going to pick up injuries. We have a fe- couple of fellas coming back that are on the panel today that weren't um, on the panel against Cantor or Killer. So, you know, things are good. But, you know, um, I suppose the week previous to this, we took a break. So it's, we're back into a week of hurling, probably eight, eight or nine days of hurling. And you could see, you know, the last couple of nights, um, the last night, especially training towards the night, you know, the t- touch was better and uh, they were in better form. Um, just a word then on uh, coming into this, uh, Cloyne know they have to win, Newcastle know a draw or a win will get the job done for you, but I don't think any team has ever gone in playing for a draw, so it's uh, all guns blazing for the win today. Yeah, I suppose that's the beauty of it. I, I suppose if you go through all the, the groups, um, everyone has something to play for. It's either if you want to top the group, if you want to qualify, or if you want to stay with the relegation. So that makes it really interesting. So um, I suppose ourselves and Klein, we're, we're looking to qualify. So it's just all systems go and just go, go home for one hour and uh, we'll see what happens at the end. So those are the views of the Newcastle manager Jim O'Sullivan and the Cloyne selector John O'Lamasney ahead of this game. Mark, let's start with the uh, Cloyne team sheet. I know they were sweating, uh, having talked to them during the week on the, sw- on the fitness of Owen Motherway, Brian Walsh, Morris Lynch, Brian O'Shea of the quartet. All are available. Brian Walsh in the starting 15. But you look through this team, Donal Cusack in goal, Keith Dennehy, a presence around the middle of that pitch, uh, Paddy O'Sullivan, so much senior success at county level with him McKilly in the last few years, and the Cahills as well. Yes, um, you know, one, one major change there, I suppose, is Stephen Buzang has come in at full back. He didn't start in the last game against Killer, but as you mentioned, like a very, very experienced goalkeeper, fantastic keeper, and Donald Cusick uh, will, will keep control on his backs as well, and he won't be giving away anything easy there. And then, as you mentioned there, Keith Denny in the middle of the field, but also Ashley Welch, who's been outstanding in the middle of the field. A big player for um, for Klein today would be Brian Watch, who played at midfield as well, even though he's named at 14, but played as a third midfielder against Killer the last day and got four points from play and inside two very young lads Mickey Cahill and Noel Cahill uh, two lightning quick corner forwards with a great touch Mickey Cahill takes the freeze as well for Klein up front so and you mentioned the experienced party O'Sullivan there at centre forward as well uh, and Dermot his brother is a sub here today but look overall you know there isn't there's a whole pile of changes from the last game they played um, you know I think just speaking to some of the Klein games I, I sort of a Klein uh, people after the first game against Kentuck, uh, Des, they, they, weren't, uh, they didn't play mm. so well, but they played. They, they, I think they were delighted with the result the last day, in particular the last quarter where they outscored killing nine points to one. So all in all, I think they'll be looking for another solid performance today. And the big thing is obviously whoever wins this game goes forward into the championship. Well, let's move on to Newcastle then. Uh, they were without Colm O'Donovan, who's set for shoulder surgery after being injured in the club's senior football outing against Castlehaven. And that's a game that's uh, really taken its toll, as we found out earlier on, as you've heard there from uh, Jim O'Sullivan. Cora Keane, so vital for this team uh, the dual star he needed stitches after an injury in that game and with that injury being so recent and the stitches so fresh he also misses out today Sean O'Donovan red carded against Killa available again for this one but the loss of Cara Keane as we heard there earlier is a massive one yes, he's, a, he's a massive massive loss and uh, he's an accomplished holder and he's certainly a fantastic footballer as well um, you know he's he's a huge loss but it wouldn't surprise me Des, if you if the game is tight here coming down the stretch that we would see him I suppose the fact that Newcastle has so many players playing football and hurling and they, they'll probably have one eye in the football match again next weekend so they'd be hoping I suppose to, to, to have their business done maybe you know you know within the first 45 minutes and then, but if they don't and if they're not true to the next round I wouldn't be surprised if you could see Cara Keane at some stage yeah the footballers of Carberry Rangers in a, a massive group game for them next they've one win and one defeat in their uh, senior football group so far um, look at the table then Mark um, it's got Canturk you look at look at the, t- the, the sides that are topping the, the um, senior A groups at the moment Canturk Charleville Father O'Neill's all recent winners of the Premier Intermediate grade and all making a real good fist of this uh, senior hurling now yes and, and like there is nothing between the three teams um, you know in terms of scoring difference and, and I suppose the first job that both that all those three teams will have to do today is get the, the win I suppose this, to make sure they try and get through to the semi-final so of those three teams there's going to be two of them go directly to a semi-final today so a win in the board is, is the first thing you know if, if all three teams win today uh, it'll then go to scoring uh, differences at for, as, as the first oh, point yeah. uh, as the first yeah. point so I, I think you know Ken Turk will be looking at trying to get the two points against Killer and you have Charlevin against Famaya local derby it's a very close game as well and then you have Fadon against Belly Mortal which could be a tricky enough as- assignment for Fadon Neils.
So here we are, almost ready to go. It is the uh, decisive day in terms of the Senior A Hurling Championship. Who will be booking their place in the quarterfinals? The top two best sides uh, across the group winners will go straight into the semi-finals. The rest uh, who qualify will make it into the quarterfinals. And lining up in midfield already, we can see uh, already from a, a Nusistan point of view, Colm Deneen has gone in uh, alongside Ty Toomey. And, and the big thing here is that Luke Mead, who is the centre forward for Newcastle, is playing centre back for Newcastle, picking up Paddy O'Sullivan. I think that's that's big news. I think in this team, in particular, because Luke Mead is a, I suppose he's seen as a, a senior forward for Cork at this, at this moment in time. He does play centre back for the senior football team in Newcastle, so he'll be no stranger to that. And he's a brilliant hurler as well. Uh, possesses great pace. I suppose is probably the threat of Paddy O'Sullivan as centre forward that Newcastle are looking at to try and quell it. So we're off and running at Parky Rin. Which of these two can settle the better? First uh, meaningful possession. Uh, won by Newcastle, who looked to play the way out. As we mentioned, a whole host of senior footballers, well into double figures, involved with uh, the Newcastle hurlers as well. Premier Intermediate winners back in 2015. Fifth year now in the Senior Championship. Cut a, quarter, a couple of quarter final appearances as well. Randy McKilly very close uh, a couple of years ago. And in the rock down below us. Sideline ball given to Cloyne. We saw a big result for a side wearing the, the red and black here last week, Mark, with UCC beating him McKinley. That's right, yeah, absolutely. The colours were raised. Uh, UCC did, had a fantastic win over the three times, I suppose, three in a row and four in a row seeking uh, county champions in McKinley. Colm Deneen, excellent ball in to the big man, Fionn Keane, who has uh, his first sight of the goals, but that one going left and wide. Fionn Keane, brother of Corrock, big target man inside there. Yeah, the team up at the moment is the uh, Cloyne captain, Brian Fleming. First ball to be contested from a puck out, and it's Newcastle who win it. And Conor O'Neill comes back to safety and picked up by that man wearing 11, but operating as you said from the start to centre half back. Luke Mead, the Cork senior, drops it into the dangerous area. Scramble for possession eventually. Cloyne Co cannot kick it away, but here's a shooting opportunity. And that one, as the umpires have a little look at each other, is over the bar from the man, the late call up, James Kelleher. Yeah. A very good, a very good uh, score there from James Keller. A high ball that came in from Luke Mead, batted out by the Klein defence, and laid off to, to to James Kelleher, who did well to, on the second attempt to get the ball over the bar. James Kelleher starting in that position, vacated by Luke Mead in the number eleven role. Here's a chance for Klein though. Kieran Mullins setting sail over on that far side has a good look at the post. Uh, not an easy chance, and across the face of goal and wide from Kieran Mullins. Two points against Killa, unable to find one there. Yeah, and it's noticeable that both Paddy O'Sullivan and Luke Mead are on a lot of ball already and, and, and dispersing it very well. Now the call was made obviously by the new, new uh, Newcastle selectors to put Lee, Luke Mead back there. Paddy O'Sullivan playing right where his number would indicate. It's a fascinating contest. We've got some uh, great matchups today, but great contrast between the goalkeepers as well. 43 year old uh, uh, multi decorated, multi title winner Donal O'Cusack and the teenager at the other end, Cahill Wilson, son of Charlie. Uh, senior county winner with Carberry back in the mid 90s that's right I, I, play, I played against both of them uh, Des down through the years but um, I suppose Don Logue was winning a, a minor All Ireland back in 1995 and uh, Cahill wasn't around at that stage so there's a huge difference in, in terms of age and stuff like that like, but the importance of both the players and the positions that they hold today uh, is still exactly the same but I'm um, looking forward to seeing young Cahill Wilson playing in goals his dad Charlie was a fantastic keeper both for Cabria and for Newcastle. Mikey Cahill out looking at his first free of the day. Eight points against Kent Turk, six from place balls, eight against Killa, seven from place balls. Suggests he's had a good campaign so far. It's a dangerous ball, and Cahill Wilson, the goalkeeper, just lost it for a moment. Didn't have the legs, that one from Mikey Cahill. Still might be an opportunity there for Cloyne, though. A nice turn from Connor Cahill, but he's bottled up by a three, four Nusa Stone defenders over there. And the ruck for possession begins. And over there for Cloyne is Noel Cahill. Stalemate and Cahill unable to get it up onto his stick and eventually it's Newcastle who can come away with it. But they're making hard work of it. It might be a goal opportunity here for Cloyne who are in. Great chance and there's the opening goal. Slammed to the net by Noel Cahill. It looked like Newcastle had averted the danger but uh, one pass too many maybe as they tried to work their way out and Noel Cahill took full advantage. Yeah, I, and he was very, very good against Killer as well the last day. Uh, very, very sharp, great touch and he showed great composure around the Newcastle defence and tapped the ball to the net. A great start for Klein. Now one of the minors on this uh, Klein senior team starting today, Noel Cahill, and what start to the game for him. Showed real composure as well to go around the advancing Cahill Wilson, the Newcastle goalkeeper and just uh, stroke it into the empty net. 
Now, just going back to the goal that was scored, Des, I mean, the, the, the ball was over in the far corner here in Packy Ring, and there were seven or eight people around it. Nobody actually claimed the ball, and it flicked around, and next of all, the danger came back into the square, and it was great uh, play by Noel Cahill to pick it up, and uh, showed fierce composure for a, a, a kid who's only eight, playing minor this year with his club, and um, he finished it well past the goalkeeper in Cahill Wilson. Here's Kean Healy. Heavy score in the championship for Noosa's Town so far, and uh, Donald Cusack has to wave that one over his crossbar. Keen Healy's first uh, score of the day 1 9 against Killa, 12 points against Kanturk, and 1 now against uh, Cloyne for Keen Healy. A very important score as well uh, for, for Noosa's Town to get, you know, to knock the, the stuffing out of the goal that was got for Klein. Great delivery from Donald Cusack, lands it right into the waiting hand of Keith Dennehy. But Noosa's Town working hard around the middle third to get possession back again. Coming away with it is Aina Motherway, another of the minors in this Cloyne uh, team. Middleton CBS student, dangerous ball dropped inside as well. Lovely pick up and on the turn it's Mikey Caho. Umpires having a good look but this one just drifting to the left and wide. Yeah but a nice smart ball in from Paddy O'Sullivan right in front of Mickey Cahill. Showed, showed in front, got a good touch, looked up. Just his, 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 his eye was out a, a little bit but he'll settle down after that now. Yeah, a good little run from Luke Mead out to the far side, invading the uh, attentions of Paddy O'Sullivan to receive the puck out from Kyle Wilson. Moses Town on the attack again, that breaks away from Sean O'Donovan. Cousin of uh, Garrod and Cullum. Midfield for the footballers, uh, Sean O'Donovan, big man in there as well. They have a couple, Sean O'Donovan, Fionn Keane. If there could be some uh, high ball raining in on top of that yeah. coin full back line. Yeah, and, and it has been a feature so far that a number of the, the, the attacks from the Noosa Town players have been struck in high. But Noosa Town are playing with kind of a two man inside line. And um, as you mentioned, Sean Dunham is a very tall player. So you couldn't expect, I said, that, that they, they certainly won't want to be putting the ball into the goalkeeper and the Donald Low because his handling is excellent and, he, and his, you know, his, his awareness of where his uh, defenders are and his midfielders are is outstanding as well. So. You know, they will be trying to land a lot of the ball on top of Sean O'Donovan. Oh, what a sideline cut that is. We saw one last week from Mark Coleman. We've seen another one today. And that was Jack Mead. The brother of Luke. That was uh, just a real art form. And he executed it superbly. And good response to the concession of the goal from Newcestown. That's one in towards uh, the goal scorer Noel Cahill again. Beaten to it this time. Newcestown getting out in front. A winning good ball. And now charging forward is there. Number seven, Cullum Deneen. Sets up an opportunity to his right hand side and starting to find their groove now, New System. Well, it's, it's the response to the goal is the, is the major thing. I mean, there, there, is a, there is a bit of, you know, the, the wind is actually swirling here in Packy Ring because the tricolour is blowing to the Pack Rock end and the, the flags and the field are actually blowing into the city end. So the wind at the moment hasn't any major influence, but the, on the field of play, it's four scores versus one score. And Jack Mead's point from the sideline, followed by his midfield partner, Ty Toomey, slotting over that latest one. And looking to go on the attack again with Fionn Keane. Breaks out of his hand, though, as he almost ends up in the Cloyne dugout. So a good contest so far. Four well-taken points for Noosa's Town to the goal from Noel Cahill for Cloyne. One-point game, seven and a half minutes played. And, you know, even looking at the, the, the mentors, there's on both sides, you've Tim Crowley and Jim Sullivan, Peter O'Halloran and the Noosa's Town, very, very experienced. And you've John Lamaston and Donny Cahill. A lot of people would know Don, Donny from being around the, the East Cork board and Terence Connellan as well. Very experienced men on both sides. And uh, interesting enough, Vincey Hurley from... Of course, your overs is training Noosa's Town and Peter Cody from Yall is training uh, Klein. Klein sideline cut. Lovely contact on that one. Lands uh, into the waiting hand though of Luke Mead. And now Mead can set off. A little bit of open ground in front of him. Pops the hand pass to find Colm Deneen. Noosa's Town back in possession again. Mark Courtney. One of the few who uh, isn't a dual player. And Courtney's injured. Took a blow to the ribs there as he was getting rid of that ball. But play will go on. Noosa's Town in possession again. And... Lots of open space to attack here for Garrodo Donovan. And Garrodo Donovan, All Ireland under 20 winner at football uh, with Cork last year in that terrific final against Dublin, is the latest to uh, put his name on the scoreboard. And the referee's attention now drawn to the prone Mark Courtney. 
He's going to need some attention, but another well taken score that one from Garrodo Donovan. Yeah, and Mark Courtney just said, you know, he clashed in with one of the client players. There was nothing in it, absolutely. And um, But what you're finding with the Nusistown style of play at the moment is that a little bit of football, because what they're doing is the man in possession gets the ball, does great communication with the fellas left and right of them. They're not panicking, they're not slapping the ball into the corners for the sake of slapping it in there. And they're, they're, they're finding their men. And you're, what you're finding is there's a lot of overlaps actually coming in the Nusistown team as well. There's been, particularly over on the far side of the field from the stand here, um, there's been two or three scores scored. Um, there where you have a number of the Nooses home players overlapping and, and, and getting in position and that's more a football trait than a holding trait is Niall Murray just looking away to our left uh, of Nooses Town has gone on for a little warm up just uh, as they wait on the the report on the fitness of Mark Courtney but five points from five different scores as well for Nooses Town so far that will delight the manager Jim O'Sullivan and here they are again Cullum Deneen the number seven getting on plenty of ball already from that half back line and now an arrow down into the corner. Referee will bring it back for a chopped up. Yeah, and um, you know, in, in the I suppose overall at this moment, that, you know, Kieran O'Regan, the referee, has been leaving the the game flow, and there's there's nothing in it at the moment. And um, you'd have to say that a lot of the, the possession um, f- coming from puck outs and coming from general play is landing just on the Newcastle half back line, and they seem to be well on top. That 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 three half backs and the two midfielders are well on top at this moment in time. Well, coverage again today brought to you in association with co-op stores and we're off to a parky quive later on Douglas and Middleton and the premier senior Doug Dunlow Cusack eyes on that one all the way little improvised pass and Cloyne can start looking forward again hand pass finds Dave German and that's a, a wasted pass as they tried to work their way out through and Jack Callahan no chances that was played behind him yeah, but it was good play by the Nooses Town forwards as well, that they were forcing the defender to, to go short with him. They weren't giving him an opportunity to hit it long, and they forced the turnover here now in a very, very dangerous position. We have a perfect angle of this when he landed one from the far sideline, Jack Mead. Dare he do it from this side. Oh, he's unlucky there. The ball just uh, rolled as he was about to strike it. Dave German for Klein trying to get down on that ball again. Jack Mead up against his opposite number, Ashley Walsh. He'll get a second chance, Des, to, to, um, to, to take two in this situation. But I don't know whether the cameras can pick it up at this moment in time. But there is only four players, fight with, if you include the keeper inside the Newsestown, or sorry, the Klein half of the field at this moment in time. Everybody else is back on the other side of the field. So take two, as you said, for uh, Jack Mead. And this one doesn't go much better. And Klein back in possession. And now they look to work their way away. It's uh, Keith Dennehy. Lots of energy, covers a lot of ground. Drops that one into his uh, inside forward line, asking the Cahills to contest for it. Good work from the Town defence again, and once again it's Cullum Deneen. And the intent straight away to start charging forward. Pops it off to uh, Jack Mead, who had to juggle with it as the pressure was coming late. And Mead under pressure now. And trying to bodies around, and strong work from Jack Hallahan. Yeah, and, and Kieran O'Regan tried to leave the game developed there. Uh, just, I suppose, uh, Jack Mead's enthusiasm to, to get to the ball has been a small... He's hardly clashed um, with the, the half-back of um, Klein, um, Brian Minahan, and a free in for Klein. Which is taken by Ashley Walsh over towards that far corner and the goal scorer, Cahill. And Lucy's down back in possession, and this time they go direct and they go long towards the uh, man wearing 17, James Kelleher. Manages to break the ball down to himself and then off his left hand side that's brilliantly charged down. But back in possession is Garrodo Donovan, the half back with one point to his name already. He's got uh, five or six uh, black and red jerseys around him. And a little push brings the blast of the whistle from the referee. Yeah, and the Klein defence wrapped up uh, Garoda Donovan coming through, uh, as you mentioned earlier on, a very accomplished footballer as well. Uh, forced him into the turnover, and um, you know, Nusa Town in their enthusiasm have conceded a free here now, and it's a, it's a clearance for um, a free shot from the Klein defence. Klein will want to get that scoreboard ticking again, just the one score for them so far. Another dangerous ball dropped in around to where he had the goal scorer, Noel Cahu. Here's Paddy O'Sullivan, very tight angle and his first chance of the game Paddy O'Sullivan and he made it look easy great score yeah excellent score from Paddy O'Sullivan rifled the ball over the bar a ball that was knocked down went into Noel Cahill first he knocked it down and it f- fell to Paddy and he rifled it over the bar fantastic score and Paddy O'Sullivan who scored a 2-1 in the 2018 Senior County Final for him McKilly prodigious scorer of the last few years and referee not happy with that one 
A bit I don't know. Has he awarded a free in? Uh, Desi hasn't a signal, but we're all presuming that he has. It, it looked as though both of them clashed for the mm. ball legitimately, but he, he is awarding it. Um, yep. Keen Healy's got his hands in it. One point uh, already. More difficult free this one. And both teams are are, um, are implementing a two-man inside line and I suppose the, the most important thing with a two-man inside line is that the ball coming into them is, is hit quick and early into the side you know if you're starting to play it through the lines and you have two men inside they're redundant really yeah no problems at all for Kean Healy as soon as he struck it didn't even look knew that one was uh, struck straight and through and it is now uh, six points for Town, 1-1 for Cloyne two-point game Paddy O'Sullivan plucks it Beautifully out of the sky. And a good ball down into the corner. Good good ball that for any corner forward. And out across by Mikey Cahill. Taken neatly on the turn. And Brian Walsh. The team to have fouled the ball. I think he was getting a bit of encouragement from the New South Wales players as well that he had overcarried it. I thought he was maybe on his fourth or fifth step, maybe maximum. But a great um, a great high feel from Paddy O'Sullivan from the puck out and a, a good ball into Mickey Cahill who won a first time and crossed it across to Brian Walsh. Colm Deneen opens up the shoulders, puts everything behind that. It's going to drop a little bit short. Cloyne do well to break the ball away. It's picked up by James Kelleher though. Trying to force his way through the mass ranks of the Cloyne defence. Cloyne managed to work it away down towards uh, Connor Cattle. Picked up here by Brian Walsh. Again a low ball into that full forward line. Good work by Newcastle again though to spot that ball coming in, reading the pass, getting out in front. Little reverse ball inside from Brian Walsh. A little bit too much air in it for Paddy O'Sullivan and Newcastle Town. Looking to come away again. And Keith Dennehy on top of uh, the Newcastle Town man. Not yeah. allowing uh, Ty Toomey any chance to get off the ground. Yeah, t a turnover ball again, and I suppose it's something now that, like, if you're a mentor, and we we'll say if you're just trying to, we we'll say get a get a handle on the referee and stuff like that, he's not leaving uh, any overcarrying certainly go at this moment in time. Even though I, I think you know there, there was good defence on both teams so far when the, the man is in possession, they are holding him up, so uh, they're forcing the they're forcing the player to either drop it, you know, or strike it, or move it on. But certainly, he's not going to leave it de develop. I suppose in some respects, past four four or five steps. A little bit of back chat afterwards. The referees moved the free into a far more advantageous position now for Mikey Cahill. <coughs> One free already. That drop short. Little spin of the hurl. Steps up. Eyes on the target. And this one safely over the bar and Cloyne, uh, an important couple of scores now, Paddy O'Sullivan at one and that one following from Mikey Cahill. Yeah, and like the funny thing is, is that, you know, even though Cloyne got the goal early in the game, um, Newstone responded very well and got the next four points from play um, and, and there was a sideline thrown in in the middle of it. And there's only a point between the two teams at the moment, six points, two goal and two. So there's very, very little in the game, even though I think in the overall context, um, Newstone has been just that slight bit sharper in terms of the amount of possession they have, but there's absolutely nothing in it and the other thing I would say is that is that both forwards uh, for Klein Mickey Cahill and Noel Cahill I think if they get enough early ball they look as though they have that little bit of toe on the two boys even though Michael Maxwell I've seen him for years he was a dual underage player in the development squads in Corkwood and Hurling football so he certainly is not going to give up anything easy but they, they just they look sharp and, and in a big field like Park you're in here today where the side is absolutely fantastic quick ball into those two forwards could make an awful lot of difference. Well, Newcastown haven't hung around at the water break. They've gone over, had a very, very brief chat, and they're heading back out again. May have seen what happened up the country during the week, and referee decided one team was hanging on too long, threw in the ball, and off they went. Yeah, but but there's like the, the reality is it is a water break. It is not um it's not a break for management to be getting even though the management you know as well as I do, management are going to give two or three messages in that minute. But it is a water break, and it's something that the um, the GA had introduced to make sure that the matches go ahead this year. So I think you know in the fairness of the game you just have to treat it that way a good contest this so far Cloyne knowing they have to get the win today due to an inferior scoring difference Newcestown know if it ended in a draw that would be enough to send them through with Canturk and it's a tight affair so far Cloyne certainly were beaten double scores by Canturk in their opening game uh, in Killavull and much much better against Killa strong finish to that game they even uh, could afford a missed penalty from Keith Dennehy 
But certainly if you're coming into a must-win game like this, maybe better to have lost the first one and won the second and have that little bit of momentum. Well, it, it, you know, it's a funny thing. We, 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 we might be talking about the Premier Intermediate from last night, but towards Corsi Rovers, Des, for people that may not know, had no point in the board last night. The other teams involved in it were Ahada and Jal, and they had all beaten each other. But Corsi Rovers, by the fact that they beat Ahada last night, actually leapfrogged Jal and Ahada and got into and they're in the quarterfinals of the championship. So. The, just in this in this game, it's, 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 you know, last night that was a, a real turn up for the books. Yeah, and we wonder what twists and turns lie await in the uh, Premier Senior and Senior A Championship. This is a, a tight one so far, as we mentioned. We've reached 19 minutes at Parky Rin. More scores for Newcestown, but the goal has certainly kept Cloyne well in touch here. And the, the last couple of scores have been impressive ones. And here they come again with Mikey Cahill from a, a tight angle. Just couldn't quite find a the touch that Paddy Cahill or Paddy O'Sullivan did from this near side a little bit earlier on and that chance comes to nothing yeah Newsys don't want to get on with the game a, a little bit quicker and stuff for that and um, referee Kieran really not, lo not in, waiting for the, the whistle to be blown there's a few lads who'll be meeting out here again in a few weeks uh, in a mother way Noel and Connor Cahill will be playing for St. Coleman's which is the Klein Shanagari amalgamation in an upcoming minor Premier 2 semi-final against Newsys Town so these colours will be in evidence once more in a, an underage grade. I think that game uh, may be on Wednesday week. The ball played in by Dave German. Nice turn that from Noel Cahill. And is he in again? He's going for his second goal of the game and he's found it. Well, you mentioned it. Good ball into the Cahills in that full forward line for Cloyne. They could do damage. That's uh, two opportunities for Noel Cahill. Two goals now. They might be looking to put Luke Mead back into the full back line because, I mean, like... The, the we mentioned it earlier on, I think the two lads in front, they possess a great touch and great bit of pace and very, very cool again. That's his second goal today now and he's showing maturity way beyond his years. Fantastic goal. There's an opportunity for a quick reply, Garrodo Donovan. Dangerous ball dropped in to his full forwards. Uh, two big men in there as we mentioned earlier on. But you just wonder, Mark, this gets interesting now because you look back to the Newcestown game against Canturk. They conceded three goals in a 10-minute spell in that first half and despite their revival, they couldn't quite get there. Two goals shipped here in this first half as well. Yeah, well, the one thing I find is with Newcestown, they, they are not going to give up and they will keep going. Like, you know, any football team that possess an extra bit of fitness there, so they certainly won't be giving up before the 60 minutes is out. And Cloyne come again. Good work by Paddy O'Sullivan to set up Keith Dennehy. And they're yeah. enjoying a good little spell here, Cloyne. They this must win game. Yeah, two, two, three um, to six points, three points up. And you know, if there is any slight little breeze, it, 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 it's not, it's not favouring any team here today. No, uh, the Lucas Town line not happy feeling that was down in the hands of uh, Jack Mead. Oh, but to be fair to Jack Halloran in, in the Klein jersey there, he did exactly the right thing. The ball was up to be won. He batted the ball. And, you know, OK, fair enough, he went through Jack Meath. That's not a free. He's batting the ball. And if the player puts up his hand and he doesn't put up his holly to protect himself, that's his problem. And credit Jack Mead as well. Didn't make anything of it. Here's an opportunity now for David Buckley. First chance he's really had in possession. Pops it off to Key and Healy. Excellent block down that from Dave German. And his clearance, not all it should have been, and Jack Mead can return it with interest here. But left and wide. A poor, poor wide, a poor wide there now, um, and a poor clearance as well, but uh, no damage on either side. Well, to be contested on the Newcestown half back line. I know it's been spilled here by Colm Deneen, and here's an opportunity for Paddy O'Sullivan. Deneen trying to get back at him. Paddy O'Sullivan steps away into space. Another fantastic score. Two points in the game for Paddy O'Sullivan. Both scores of beauty. Yeah, and, and the thing what you notice there is that Paddy O'Sullivan, he, he won the ball maybe 50 yards out. He looked behind to see had he had the opportunity to take it on another 10 yards, which he did. He made the score secure, tapped the ball over the bar, and a very, very good score for Klein. Scored 11.38 by my calculations in the last three senior campaigns with him, Achille. Paddy O'Sullivan, three times the senior county championship winner. And Klein looking forward again. It's uh, Kieran Mullins. To send it down that far side. Didn't have enough on it though to hit Noel Cahill. Luke Mead can play it away. Picked up by James Kelleher. And Kelleher has time to set his sights here. And this also going left and wide. And there is the difference between Paddy O'Sullivan and James Kelleher. And not being critical on James. But he, he had so, so much time that he should knock the ball out. But he could have took it on another 5 or 10 yards and made, and made sure of the score. Conor Cahill no way through. Good work by Newcestown in their half back line again. Here's James Kelleher. It's hard work to get out for either side at the minute. Cullum Deneen saw the man in space on this near side. Good pass to pick out Mark Courtney, the cornerback, who's well up the pitch. Here's Jack Mead. 
We've seen a lot of ball in this first half, but Dave German is really getting to the pitch of this game now. The longer it goes, big clearance downfield from Jack Hallahan. Chasing the man, Noel Cahill, the, the youngster who's on a hat-trick now already. Two goals already in this first half, both superbly taken. Deneen turning inside into pressure, kept his composure though. Now they can work it out towards this near side. Pass over hit though. <coughs> no opportunity there for Luke Mead. Yeah, one ball, one ball, one pass too much there, Des. Uh, they got the opportunity to to clear it, and over an overhead pass to Luke Mead. Um, off camera here, we're seeing um, there's a booking here for the uh, left half back Jack Hallahan from uh, Klein for. I think what the referee has uh, indicated is a slap at a hurley from a previous incident. So good play by the referee to pick up on something that happened some time ago. That composure, that poise that New Sistown started the game, it just looks to have deserted them in the last few minutes. They look to rediscover that and push on for some more scores. Six uh, well taken points, but it's been a while since they've had one now. As Klein have come back at them strongly to uh, turn a disadvantageous position into uh, one where they're ahead on the scoreboard now. And here's the man who can do no wrong at the moment, Noel Cahill. As soon as we say that, he puts one wide. <laughs> He's a bit far out from goals. <laughs> that man only likes goals, uh, Des, to be fair. Like, uh, and again now here, oh. uh, you know, a big decision here again now. I suppose, <coughs> I don't know now whether he has spoken to the both goalkeepers before the game that he's basically saying to them, you know, that you, you can't know he, What he's indicating here is that the Newcastle player got the ball before inside the 21 yard line. Now, that's a big pickup for a referee that was 40 yards away, but look, it is what it is. But we've got to be very careful in the puck outs here. If, I, if you're in charge of any team here, you'll be sent to both keepers. You need to be really, really, because Kiran is really, I suppose he's, he's refereeing very strict today. It's the second time Kyle Wilson has been, uh, the young goalkeeper has been caught for an indiscretion with his puck out. Ball is thrown in. And it's Newcestown who gained possession. Sent towards centre field. Race is on now to try and get to it. And losing out was David Buckley. Here's Garrodo Donovan who's had a big first half for Newcestown. Big, strong, athletic wing back. <coughs> Here's the uh, same position for the senior footballers. Lovely take that. Here's an opportunity for Sean O'Donovan first good ball he's had got out in front got it into his right hand had a look over the bar and, and it's a score that Noosa's how needed because they haven't had the scoreboard ticking over for about 10 or 12 minutes at this stage Des, and they need to kick on now before half time you know there's three points down and they're, they're well out of the game kind of totally on top all over the field excellent from Paddy O'Sullivan again and gets the hand pass away to his left hand side Kieran Mullins that's one left behind for Cloyne a bit unlucky you now, and I suppose if you uh, to, to praise the man, he's right. He's wide on the right hand side of the post, at the far side, to give it every opportunity to get in. This time, Cahill Wilson not taking any chances, going as long as he possibly can. Drops it into that half forward line. Lovely take that from David Buckley. A very very good score. Oh, was no, the referee's he's blown, he's the blown it back. Yeah, yeah. the referee had indicated he, he had his hand up for a free uh, long puck out from the uh, from Cahill Wilson in goals and well held over there by De David Buckley and he's earned his team a free. And this uh, well within range for Key and Healy and looking down at the flags down below us, wind assisted. It is, uh, but it is swelling. I mean, on the ground, we are seeing the, 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 the flags are going towards the city end of the field. But when you look at the tricolour, it's actually growing to the black reckon. So on, on it's difficult for free takers and for fellas, you know, trying to hit the ball over the bar from 15, 60 yards today. Don't know, Cusack sends it long, brilliantly taken. And again, looking for that pass, which they have done on a few occasions. Luke Mead that time. Yep. As they try and look for the short popped hand pass to work their way out and it's gone astray and gone awry on a few occasions in this first half yeah a bit too from blind there from uh, Luke Mead he had won a great puck out and um, had tried to give a flick back to his cornerback but it didn't, it didn't uh, materialise and then tried to flick it back behind his arm and it deflected out for a line ball and I suppose with the ball that Sean Donovan had won inside uh, for the last point you know from play for Newcastle he may be better off to get the ball into his own square Paddy O'Sullivan Lovely clean contact and it's drifting in as well. Just didn't have enough to get over the crossbar of Cahill Wilson who kept his eye on it all the way. And the minor goalkeeper. His clearance is sent back but sent wide by Jack Hallahan. Jack will be di disappointed with that now and he, and he should have been aiming for the far side of the, the, the field for the left-hand post. Went right on his near side. Excellent puck out from Wilson that time to pick out Cullum Deneen and Deneen with the angle switch of play over towards that far corner. Neatly picked up by Kean Healy. 
That one's dropping short as well. An excellent work by the cornerback, Brian Fleming. As experienced as they come, the Cloyne captain just to ease his man out of it and ensure his goalkeeper, Donald Cusack, had a clean catch to take under no pressure. Luke Mead drives between two would-be tacklers. Little bounce of the ball to uh, gain more possession. Luke Mead continues on. Two men to his right-hand side. Here's an opportunity for Kean Healy again. Not an easy chance. Oh, but he's got the range. Excellent score made by Luke Mead. Finished by Kean Healy. Yeah, fantastic score from Kean Healy and great work by, um, by Luke Mead to come up the field. Uh, rode a couple of tackles. Didn't panic. Recycled the ball. Fell to Kean Healy. And a very, very important score for Newstone. Again, you know, it's two, two, six, ten points to nine, but it's actually nine scores to six days. A one point game as Jack Callahan pirouettes away from Jack Mead. And good covering in behind Garrodo Donovan. Hand pass worked on by Ty Toomey. Colin Deneen deemed to have charged into his man. Well, I'd mentioned earlier on that, you know, just already after 20 minutes, he's not going to allow any excess um, overcarrying of the ball and stuff for like that. And, um, you know, really the Newcastle players and the manager need to start to realise that, that on your fourth step, they're going to have to release it. And I suppose it's just maybe a trait in football and stuff for like that, that they are taking the extra step. They are, because more often than not, you will carry the ball into the tackles and stuff for like that. But Kieran is, is consistent. That's the big thing with the referee. He is consistent in what he's what he's blowing for oh Mikey Cahill contact wasn't clean you could hear it on that one no and that's two that he's missed he missed the first one was a difficult one because it was outside the 65 yard line for a young lad and maybe you know he, he won't have played a whole pile of times in Parky Ring but um, he would have been expected to score that one yeah well they do have a, a couple of options I suppose outside of Mikey Cahill if he's not having a great day with the freeze but uh, we won't judge him too soon Paddy O'Sullivan is there that looked off the ground yeah Picked clean off the ground and uh, good call by the referee and, and it was actually behind. The referee couldn't see it. He was behind the, the man on the ground. So it was a good call. But, um, you know, no better pl player maybe than Paddy O'Sullivan. And he's, Paddy is playing very, very well today. He's on a lot of possession. And for the second time now we've seen it, you know, back chatting from the Nooses home players. And this is, this is certainly what you don't want to be doing in a tight game is, uh, you know, a uh, free that was on the mid halfway line has now been brought um, you know, 10 yards inside the 65 yard line and we actually do have a change in free taker now yeah, Ashley uh, Watch is stepping up to take and a very very accomplished free taker as well yeah three of his five scores against Killa coming from freeze <laughs> at least one minute added on we've played that minute already so we might have another one who knows as uh, Ashley Walsh opens his shoulders and sends that one over yeah, struck true and, and safe, like, you know, um, in M Mickey Cahill's situation. He just didn't he didn't strike through the two balls that he took the freeze from, but he learned from today. Yeah, two-point lead for Cloyne, who have rallied after a very slow start to this one. Moussasan coming forward and the tackle on Ty Toomey draws uh, the ire of the Moussasan people in the stand here. Substitutes away to our left-hand side. Yeah, I think... Possibly number nine, Ashley Walsh was probably the person that probably I'd say he would be going into the book days in my opinion. Um, nothing more than a yellow card required, but he certainly is a yellow card. Mm. You know, instead of maybe flicking and trying to get in and be a little bit more patient, wait for the player to throw up the ball, he swung slightly wild. And um, you know, a yellow is probably sufficient for the for the tackle. Yeah, Ashley Walsh joining Jack Hallahan on a yellow card in this first half, and another opportunity for Kean Healy. And we're right behind this one. And that's uh, beautifully struck from Key and Healy. And one back for Newcestown. 2 5 for Cloyne. 10 points for Newcestown. One point game. And the referee will uh, blow the whistle to bring this uh, well contested first half to a close. And we're going to take uh, a brief pause. We'll be back with you to reflect on the main moments of that first half in uh, a little bit of time.
Yes, welcome back to Parky Rin. Uh, really enjoyable first half between Cloyne and Newcestown here on the final round of group games in the Cork Senior A Hurling Championship Group 1. And look at the scoreboard away to my left-hand side. It is 2-5 for Cloyne, 10 points for Newcestown. Um, lots to take out of that first half, I suppose, Mark. You look at how Newcestown started. They had six points on the board um, from five or six different scorers as well and all very well taken. But often it comes down to goals. And uh, in terms of that, Cloyne have Noel Cahill, it seems, today. Yeah, well, he, he was brilliant now, to be fair. The two goals that he scored, um, you know, s similar in, um, I suppose, similar in the way they were scored, uh, breaking balls, picked the ball up, took on the man, uh, started the first one, actually going past one of the defenders. And when Cahill Wilson and goals for Newcestown came out, he held his head and, 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 and struck it high into the net and then in the second one he, he passed another new sound defender but kept it low underneath Cahill Winston so he's been very very sharp for, for uh, Klein today but overall I think Klein have been you know having had a, probably a weak start uh, you know in the first 15 minutes they were really out of the game as you say six points to one goal or six scores to one score which showed that Newcastle were well and had a lot of possession particularly in the half back line and Garota Donovan and Luke Mead were very prominent in the first uh, 15 minutes but Klein have warmed to the task and they've come into the game you know really really well all over the field from Brian Fleming and Don Logue in goals right out throughout, throughout the team and um, I think you know Paddy Sullivan as well has been on a lot of ball even though Luke Mead has been on a lot of ball for, for Newstone as well but in the overall context of things there's, there's, there's very little in the game uh, but you'd have to say even though the Klein are a point up Two them, two them, two major scores of the two goals. So it's you know it's it's ten scores to seven, and that would give me a slight indication that maybe Newstown have a bit more possession. But but Kleiner, you know, leading by a point, well there is probably too close to call it at the moment. But the one thing that we know that that neither team are going to give up because you know, Klein, you know, even though they didn't play well against Kentuck the first day, against Killer the last day, their last quarter was the most important quarter. They scored Killer nine points to one, so that's certainly in the tank. And we just certainly know from a Newstone perspective, a football team, they will be very, very fit, so they'll keep going as well. So which manager is happier at the moment? Do you know, I don't know, I, I read it, I'm happy yeah. to be honest about it, but I mean, there's a couple of key messages that you'd be giving to your to your team. I think that Noel Cahill and Mickey Cahill certainly have the beatings of the two boys inside, and I think they need quick early ball coming in from, we'll say, Paddy Sullivan and uh, Keith Denny, Ashley Walsh. The ball needs to come in faster into the full forward line. I think if I'm in the Newstown bench, I'd be saying to the players, will you leave the referee alone? Yeah. You're giving away too many frees. And then when you give away the free, you're back chatting and he's bringing it up. So I think from a discipline point of view, that's the message I'd be giving to the New uh, team. And it's was Sean Welch, or Sean Donovan, sorry, full forward, probably hasn't, he's only seen one or two balls. He possibly needs a, f a bit more ball. You've caught me, had my finger on Sean O'Donovan there. He got one ball in that he got out in front and popped it over the bar straight away. You've got him and F uh, Fionn Keane in there as well, two big target men. But yeah. that, has, that ball There's hasn't been coming in. No, but I suppose one of the fears is if the ball is going in and if it's overshot, then it's going into somebody very experienced and doing low Cusick. He's not going to make any mistake at the edge of the square. So I suppose it has to be a really, really precise ball. But I think you know one of the key things that Newsom will have to look at is you know do they leave Luke Mead at centre back yeah. or are they going to bring him centre forward? You know we also mentioned beforehand about Cara Keane and stuff. He hasn't started today. You know is there going to be a situation where Cara Keane will be required to come on for his team today? So there's a lot to play for this. Like you know, both teams, I think, will be nervous. Both teams are realizing, look, this is our chance to get to a quarter final of the county as well. And you know, it's a, it's, a, it's an extremely hard game to call at the moment. A, a, a point or, a, or you know, or a mistake on either side could swing this goal in anybody's favour. We mentioned uh, earlier on what happened to, to Newcastle in the game against Canturk when they shipped three goals in a ten-minute spell in the first half, and we said Cloyne got two in that first half. Is that something now that Cloyne will be? Just looking to prey on, do you think? And might there be doubt in the Nooses Town mind when the ball goes in there? Well, I'd be saying, like, you know, the fact that Kentuck got three goals the last, that Klein have two at half time, they're certainly not going to be afraid of, of lumping the ball into the Klein full forward line. So I'd be saying, you know, keep going. I mean, if you have a player like Noel Cahill who's absolutely flying, you know, seems that if he can get the ball in front of him and get the ball in his hand, he has the gears to go away from the from the defence. So I'd be putting in as much ball as possible in there. But, like, uh, you know, Nooses Town are going to have to tighten up on him, like, you know. Um, but then I suppose outside the field, you know, the fact that Luke Mead has been brought from centre forward back to centre back, you know, you would be saying that, you know, you just need to get a little bit more out of him and a little.
little bit more urgency, I think, to get that ball into the into the Nusa Town forward. And for, for as good as he's doing there, and he's getting on some good ball, Luke Mead, you know, he's detailed to Mark Paddy O'Sullivan by the looks of it, at least that was it from the start. Yeah. Paddy O'Sullivan's got two very good points in the game. So do you, you're thinking at some point they'll have to roll the dice and well, just put Luke Mead where may, maybe they feel he can I- impact the, the overall game a bit more. Well, the one thing I will f- you will find with Klein is that if they get a sniff of the victory here yeah. today and if Luke Mead comes from centre back to centre forward, they're not going to give him any opportunity to run at them. So Klein will tighten up their defence. And we mentioned uh, you know, in the commentary after about 15 or 16 minutes that there was only four players inside the uh, Klein half of the field, which meant everybody else was after being dragged back up the field here. And that is a tactic that teams do when they're starting to get under pressure and they can't get on the ball. They say, listen, let's tighten our defence. Let's stop us conceding scores back here. And if we do that, then we will get a couple of balls up to our forward lines to give our, our forwards an opportunity. But like, that's the tactics that are required to win games at this level now. And um, like, Klein will be very, very astute in terms of tactics and stuff like that. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see how the game is going to develop, Des. But, um, you know, it's all a bore for either team at this moment in time. Yeah, and it's that tight. And we mentioned it already. There's kind of a double opportunity for Noosa's time because if the game ends in a draw, that's good enough for them. It will. And, you know, you wouldn't put a draw beyond yeah. doubt because there's only a point between the teams at this moment in time. So, like, and, and like, this is the beauty of the championship then as well, Des. That it forces management teams, it forces players to think. You know, you're coming down the stretcher, there's got to be a point in it or maybe the scores are level, you know. Do I take a point? Do I go for the goal? All that kind of stuff comes into the head of players and stuff like that. So I suppose the important thing is that this is going to develop as the course of the game goes. But the important thing is that, is that the management have gone through that with their players in advance. Yeah. They let them know exactly what... And like the key thing for me is the result last night from Corsi Rovers. They had zero points on the board last night. And the way the matches went. So, you know, I had to beat y'all. Y'all beat Corsi's. And then Corsi Rovers beat ahead of. But Corsi Rovers had a better scoring difference. And they went from zero points last night up to two. But on scoring differences, they qualified for the quarterfinal. Which means that, you know, the team, you know, and going back into the, the whole format of the championship, a lot of people, you know, would have been saying they would have been dead rubber games. That wasn't a dead rubber. But yeah. in the past, people would have said it was a dead rubber. It wasn't. Once you have something to fight for, that's the important thing. And knowing the scoring differences, it gave them the opportunity to get to the championship. And they're now in the championship. Right, teams are moving again back in position. Before uh, we get the second half underway, just give us a quick overview of how that went uh, overall in the Premier Intermediate. Because the late scores in a couple of games means, say, for example, you've got Castle Lines and Blarney, who we covered a little bit earlier on, and now on opposite sides of the draw. Carrig line, big result for them. Well, the key, the key thing that happened last night, at the, and it was at the top of the table between Carrigaline and Castellines, um, there was one point decided who was a top ranked team. And uh, Castellines conceded a goal. So Inescara got a goal later on, and Carrigaline got a goal. There was, a, there was a six point swing, and Castellines were five points up. Mm-hmm. So Carrigaline have actually taken the top spot. What has happened with the draw is that they're now beat. They're now going to be. We say Bellarney, who are are one of the favourites at the start of the year. They're going to be coming in that side of the draw. Whether they get there now or not, we'll have to wait and see. Well, that's all for another time. We have a massive 30 minutes of hurling ahead of us here. It's uh, so tight at half time in this uh, Senior A hurling championship meeting of Cloyne and Newcastle. Cloyne with the advantage, two five to ten points. But an opportunity, uh, more or less right from the throw in here for Town to level matters up. And straight away, once the whistle was blown, Keen Healy was on his way out to have a look at this free. Impressive from the dead ball situations that arose uh, for him in the first half. And this one right on halfway. Up he steps. It's well within his range. And the accuracy levels there as well. And just a start to the second half that Town would have looked for. They've got that first score on the board. And it's all tied up at uh, Newcestown, 11 points, Klein 2-5 now. Good puck out from Donalo Cusack. Lands it into the hand of Jack Hallahan. Not much space to operate in for Conor Cahill. Klein maintained possession though, good run in support by Ashley Walsh. Scored that free late in the first half, but he pulls this one across the face of Cahill Wilson's goal and wide. And again, just with the uh, change of direction for the teams in this second half, they'll have to judge that swirling breeze. We'll wait and see which side does it better. Good hurl in there from the Town centre half back, Connor O'Neill. Worked out to the far side by Brian Minahan. 
First out in front is uh, Brian Walsh here, and Walsh has got a, a turn of pace. Excellent from Brian Walsh as they're finished at the end of it, though. And Nusistown got three men around him, and the chance has gone for now. Colm Deneen turns away from Paddy O'Sullivan. Support to his left-hand side. Big ball dropped in towards the two big men in there. Well taken there by Sean O'Donovan. And O'Donovan's got two balls into his hand, one in each half, and yep. he's uh, registered a point on each occasion. And, and the big the big change uh, straight away now is that uh, Kleiner playing with three in the full forward line now. Brian Walsh, who played in a withdrawn role in the first half, has gone into the full forward. So Kleiner three in the full forward line, and we see the Newstone continue with two inside there. And Sean O'Donovan got that that ball there on the crossfield ball. Paddy O'Sullivan couldn't control the puck out from Adonlo Cusack, which is maybe a little on the high side. And it's uh, straight away punished by Jack Mead, who saw his opportunity, pounced on it, and sent the ball sailing back over uh, Adonlo Cusack's head. And that's three scores directly after half time. We've only two and a half minutes played, and there's three scores on the board for Newcastle. Certainly come uh, flying out of the blocks at the start of this second half. Cloy need to stem the flow. But it's Newcastle to come again. And another good ball dropped inside towards O'Donovan. Can't take it with him this time, though. But he's got Fionn Keane there in support. Fionn Keane pops the hand pass out to Keane Healy. And this one is uh, right and wide, though. But already we're seeing the impact of Fionn Keane and Sean O'Donovan in there. If the ball that comes in is good. Keane Healy has drifted away out the field. Brian Fleming has a decision to make now whether he actually goes with him or he stays as maybe a loose man or a third defender in front of the two inside line. And the two guys looking down on the two big men, they're over six foot two each of them, and they have a height advantage on both decline defenders. Yeah, good work from uh, Nusis down there as Connor Cahill was setting sail down the right hand side, had an opportunity to take his point, albeit a difficult chance. Uh, Luke Mead, I think it was, who got the block in. Sideline cut low down the line, picked up by Ashley Walsh. Walsh looking to uh, use his physicality to drive his way forward, but the referee's been uh, it's been tight on that today as well. And free blown for Nusa's down. And they've just found this momentum. Yeah, they, the yeah they have this, and, and like there's only just under four minutes, but they, ha they are, whatever was said at half time. It uh, seems to have worked. And now what we saw in the first half where we said there was a bit of back chat from the Nooses Town players. This ball has been advanced now in probably a little, you know, has been advanced enough that it actually, if he gets a good strike on this, it may go over the bar. It's from the 65 in the opposite half. Good contact. But uh, that one gone right and wide as well. And you look at the two men in there hoping that might have dropped yep. for them. Got the contact, but the direction was off. And uh, looking over the far side, he it seems as though uh, the Rock or Sullivan yeah. uh, seems to be talking off. And, and, and the slip has been written. Yeah, Dermot O'Sullivan. You've got Donalo Cusack and Dermot O'Sullivan. Paddy O'Sullivan. Some serious experience in this cloying panel. And they're going to react early in the second half as the flow of the game has gone against them. Here is Paddy O'Sullivan. Picked up by Hallahan. Big shout uh, from the free man over on the far side. And that's where O'Hallahan has gone looking. Now Hallahan back, uh, Hallahan back scrapping for it again. Minahan rides the shoulder of James Kelleher. Newcestown, uh, look a hungry side out there at the moment now. Back in possession and coming looking for more scores. Good supporting run from Cullum Deneen. And Cullum Deneen, oh, and, uh, they thought it was over. It just drifted uh, at the 11th hour and another wide for Town. Really have the bit between their teeth. They've left a few scores behind them though. Good block from Conor O'Neill. Ball played forward by Jack Mead. Plenty of time here to set his sights. And David Buckley takes full advantage. And Chloe need to settle things down here. Yeah, they just have drifted out of the game at the moment. A very good score there from David Buckley. Um, hasn't been involved for the last 15 or 20 minutes of the game, but a very, very important score now. But I suppose the big thing really is that the, the Newcestown half back line have tundled into the game and their two midfielders. And Jack Mead in particular as well is getting on an awful lot of ball. Now, is that Paddy O'Sullivan who's down injured? Just checking at the moment. Uh, Dermot O'Sullivan is on. 
Yeah, Dimon has come in at wing forward now, and um, Brian Walsh has come back out the field now uh, to play as a we say maybe a fourth half forward or a second centre forward. That's the position that he's holding up at the moment. Uh, but all, just all over the field at the moment, Nusa Town seem to be getting the breaking ball. You saw a good block there as well for, you know, Jack Mead had blocked the um, the, le- the right half back there in a the way So I think just all over the field at the moment, Nusa Town seem to be getting the breaking ball. And Klein are just finding it hard to get their hands on the ball. But listen, there's you know there's 25 minutes left. There's there's plenty of time to get back into this game. But and again, just to, to reiterate, the tricolour is blowing into the black rock end, and the the, the the flags on the ground level are blowing into the city. It's, I've never seen it in Parky <laughs> Ring before. I've seen it in Crow Park where you have a wind coming in one side from the the hill 16, but I've never seen it in Parky Ring. So it's a swirling breeze. Paddy Sullivan's going to soldier on, but he's not looking too clever at the moment. Might be his right angle that he was receiving attention for. So no sooner is uh, Dermot O'Sullivan on, Paddy O'Sullivan's injured, and that would be a massive blow were they to lose him. He did go for a puck out earlier on in the first half, Mark, from Donalogh Cusack, and he just didn't, he landed and he just didn't seem to get up too quickly. I don't know if it's uh, something a hangover from that or if it's something more recent for Paddy O'Sullivan yeah yeah but look you know Paddy will, will, will battle through that now to be fair like you know um, I, there was an incident earlier on where Luke Mead had, had won the ball out of the air and he got the tail of the hurley into the shin bone and so on which uh, if you get out of the, the corner of the hurley it isn't the nicest of things it's a, <laughs> it's a bit like in the middle of winter when you get this flat of the hurley across yeah. the uh, maybe your, the side of your tie or something like that you know yeah you feel that one until March here is uh, Kean Healy doesn't have the legs that one. James Kelleher was trying to get up and win it for Nooses Town. And he gets on it again, Kelleher. Took a couple of well taken scores earlier in the game. And this one is beautifully struck. Yeah, well, you, you know, you know, a ball that was fumbled inside and uh, came back out. And Keane Healy, who was taking the free from inside his own 70, was drifting back in. And the ball broke out to him. And a, a very, very important score. Jamie O'Sullivan rising, but that one breaking over his head. Looks to be playing a you know, kind of a right half forward slash right corner forward position, Dermot O'Sullivan, on his introduction. Good work by Sean O'Donovan. Two ways, I guess, uh, uh, Mark, of looking at the Nusestown dual club situation that there may be an element of fatigue from the games, but also just a supreme level of fitness from these players playing senior in both codes. This one sent in by... Brian Walsh and yeah, just well need a score to settle them yes, they not I, finding I, at the moment I think it's incredible uh, for a club like Newcastle Town the commitment that all those players are given to be able to play at the highest level you know in, in football and hurling I think it's absolutely magnificent I don't know of any other club that will say where the players get on so well because all the other clubs there's always a bit of infighting in terms of who plays hurling and who plays football you'll, you'll always find you'll always find the three or four fellas won't play one or the other for some reason but for whatever whatever um, Whatever they're taking with that water they have down the Nooses Town, everybody seems to buy in and, and everybody puts to the shoulder to the wheel for the club. But you know, I mentioned earlier on there's about the, the, the numbers of scores that were being scored and now I, I would expect that this will be a point. It's 16 scores to 7. Mm-hmm. So it, it is a reflection, I suppose, in some respects of the amount of possession that Nooses Town have. And the way it's going, Cloyne are going to need more goals in this second half now. Keen Healy standing over another free, converting another free. And Klein have to be wary. He's a prodigious free taker, Kean Healy. Down low, Cusack. Right down the middle he goes towards Paddy O'Sullivan. Lovely pick up there from Brian Walsh. And it just looked like he was caught late by Colm Deneen after he played that ball, but it goes on and on a hat trick is Noel Cahill heading goalwards again. And the referee is going to bring it back for the free. Yeah, and again, consistent again from the referee, Kieran O'Regan, because in the first half, um, Keith, um, Ashley Walsh sorry, had done a similar thing where a, a forward was going through and he, he gave him a flick at the hurley, and the same thing has happened here. So good good play by the referee here to call back the player. He did leave the, the play actually develop a little bit, and um, he gave Noel Cahill the opportunity, but it, lo- it looked as though the new sound defender was just about to take the ball off of him. So, you know, good a good decision here by the referee. Uh, Colm Deneen, the man who's uh, got himself on the wrong side of the ref this time. And an opportunity, uh, Mikey Cahill's going to stay on the freeze in the second half. We saw Ashley Walsh land uh, a long ranger in the first half. Yeah, this is important uh, free mm. from Mickey Cahill now because he's taken two in the first half that he, he, he just didn't, they didn't go over the bar, he didn't make clean contact. And um, I'm a bit surprised that, um, that Klein actually haven't um, left Ashley Walsh take this free here. But, you know, 
it's it's important for Mickey that he would score this one, particularly because Klein haven't scored yet in the second half. Um, they've gone 11 minutes without a score now, and um, it's vital that they get a, that they get a point out of this here. Um, yeah, delaying the free due to uh, an injury picked up by Noel Cahill as he was uh, racing goalwards there a moment ago before play was brought back. He's been patched up. And now a chance for Mikey Cahill. Yeah, no mistake. Yeah, he's that, happier with that one. That'll be good for his confidence now as well. Like you know, and fair play to Klein for leaving him on him. You know, because he's he's a very very good talent and he's a, a player for the future. Short puck out taken by Cahill Wilson. Who gives it? Gets it back again. And now we can see wind assist. Or at least we think it's wind assist. It drops it down towards uh, Sean O'Donovan, who wins his ball. Klein get numbers around him though. He's picked up by Garrod O'Donovan. Cousin of Sean. Short pass played out towards this near side. David Buckley goes back to support in his half back line. Eyes on it all the way from the Clown captain Brian Fleming. And making hard work of working their way out here. Steve Bosang. And that's a loose one. And Nooses Town quickly onto it. James Kelleher. And clever from David Buckley to step back into the pocket. Find himself a little bit of space. And David Buckley adds to the Nooses Town tally. Yeah, and, and if he didn't get that, the referee had indicated that there was a free coming. But uh, Klein of Mood, Paddy O'Sullivan out to full forward. And Diarmo O'Sullivan has gone in centre forward on Luke Mead. An indication that I think they know now as well that they're going to need goals in this second half. Diarmo O'Sullivan sees Marker, tries to get a little nudge on him. Luke Mead and Diarmo O'Sullivan's done brilliantly. Here's an opportunity now, Mikey Cahill. Nusa Stone trying to get back at him. Cahill goes for goal, beaten away by Cahill Wilson. First save he's had to make uh, in earnest today, but he kept his eye on it. And just to go back to the passage of play, Des, um, Diarmuid O'Sullivan had won the ball from the puck out. The referee had indicated a free, but Diarmuid had offloaded to Mickey Cahill, and the goal opportunity was allowed to, to develop, which is very, very good refereeing from Kieran O'Reilly. Yeah, Wilson beaten twice by Noel Cahill in the first half, but not by Mickey Cahill there. Sideline ball for A and a Motherway. Looking for options. And slice the uh, sideline cut in field to a Nooses Town jersey. And Ty Toomey trying to come away with it under pressure from his opposite number. And Keith Dennehy, neither man unable to get his uh, hands on the ball. Lovely little sidestep. And a great feat by Luke Mee there. To, to, he danced his way out of trouble there. And it was beautiful, beautiful hurling and beautiful feat by Luke Mead. And great distribution down to Sean O'Donovan in the corner. Here's a chance, not an easy chance for Kean Healy. And uh, that one has drifted to the left and wide. So the scoreboard remains. Klein 2-6. Newcestown 17 points. Newcestown Premier Intermediate winners back in 2015. Hammered Valley Rovers in that final, having lost the 14 final against Ballyhay. Klein making another change. Kieran Mullins replaced by Adam Sherlock. Yeah, I'd say Klein would be looking for the water break Des at this stage now um, they've, they've gone five points down having been a point up at half time just one point to show for their efforts in this second half Klein. it's been a struggle for them to threaten that scoreboard Dermot O'Sullivan the target from Dunlow Cusack again there was a time when that uh, combination one to the other was a lot shorter in terms of <laughs> range but not these days Massive credit to both for uh, continuing to play on with their club where it all started for them of course where they made their name James Kelleher dropping one in and Dunlow Cusack eyes on it and cleared away off his uh, left hand side this time coming out to meet it is Brian Walsh can't secure possession though Nooses Town have it once more and David Buckley who's getting on a lot more ball it's a dangerous looking one in swinging towards it one handed was Fionn Keen. Dunlow Cusack can work it away to Jack Hallahan. Hallahan. Puts uh, everything that he's got behind that one, but Luke Mead, just clever, sees the ball coming, anticipates the pass, gets himself into the right areas, and distribution spot on across to Brian Minahan. Steps inside and away from the recently arrived Adam Sherlock. Excellent block down that, coming in from Ashley Walsh. Cloyne still fighting in this one, but they need some scores and they need them quickly. 45, almost 46 minutes played at Parky Rain in a must win game for Cloyne, a, a draw a win will guarantee Nusestown into the quarterfinals. Dermot O'Sullivan, awkward ball, managed to get his stick on it. Here's Adam Sherlock, the substitute. Back with Brian Walsh. 
Good pressure. Carl Wilson is his eye yeah. on this one. O'Brien Walsh has done well there to land that one under pressure. Yeah, great score from Brian Walsh there now, and great, great play by Klein in general. They got on the first time that they really got a passage of play together and, and, and generated a score. Paddy O'Sullivan has come back out from full forward, now back into his original position as centre forward. But we've had a dominant display from Luke Mead, I suppose, in the first 15 minutes, the first quarter of the second half here it is. And we're, we're um, you know, Lusitown had 10 points, I think, at half time. Mm. They've now moved to 17 like they've got seven points to Klein's two yeah. in the in the first quarter of the of the second half you know so it's um has been a really really good performance from Nooses Town and you'd have to say that, you know you asked me at halftime you know what what would both um, mentors be saying well whatever is said on both sides it has certainly had a huge a huge response from Nooses Town yeah that by a distance has been the most uh, significant quarter of the game that we've had so far Nooses Town have really put the foot to the floor and kicked on here seven points to as Mark mentioned just two for Klein We'll also mention as well that Mark will be uh, hot-footing it from here to Parky Rin to Parky Cueve. Guard escort or not, I'm not sure, but the, uh, the keys will be in the car and the I engine will be running because 7 o'clock throw in for... I could do a walk, yes, I could do 7 o'clock throw in for Douglas and Middleton in association with Co-op Superstores. That big, big game coming up a little bit later on. Uh, looking forward to that one, Mark. Yeah, looking forward to it now. Um, it's, it's a real winner-takes-all again, a bit like today. Um, but it's going to be intriguing because, you know, you have, I suppose, a star-studded... I suppose Douglas forward line really in the likes of we say Shane Kingston who's really gone through a good vein of form at this moment of time Alan Cadigan and, and Ryan Turnbull but the two, the two I suppose Cadigan and Turnbull have had a lot of injuries over the last number of years and stuff like that so I think um, you know the, the three those forwards are going to light up tonight um, I've been fancying Middleton all along to do justice to the, to the, the club themselves because they have been you know they have a lot of underage success and a lot of underage players but they haven't we said since the last time they won the county they haven't kicked on at all this. and um, you know first time I suppose they've gone for an outside manager or an outside coach I suppose in Ben O'Connor so we, you know tonight is a very very big game I think for both clubs in particular like you know that um, and it's not it's not just a big game in, in the context of the championship I think for both clubs in particular <coughs> it's a massive massive game for both of them yeah, and a massive final quarter here for Cloy now the side that had their uh, glory years the mid 90s to the mid 2000s won the 97 intermediate title they beat Delaney's in that one lost three in a row senior finals 04, 05, 06 including a uh, Dunlow Cusack and Dermot O'Sullivan in those ones yeah Dermot O'Sullivan's gone, gone full forward in a two man inside line with Noel Cahill so Klein will be I say would have the intention of going route one now for the last quarter because they find themselves four or five points down and gone totally out of the game yeah it's do or die for Klein now in the remaining minutes here the game that they have to win to advance to the quarter finals Jack Mead snaps an effort on the turn <coughs> left and wide though and Klein now will have to find that period will have to find that momentum We'll have to find those scores. And it all starts with uh, accuracy on the puck out from Dunlow Cusack. Picked up by Ashley Walsh, who turns onto his right hand side, drives one down into the corner. Brian Walsh on the move. Gets there ahead of his man, Garrodo Donovan, and Brian Walsh eyes up the target. Brilliant score that from Brian Walsh, just what they needed. Yeah, fantastic score from Brian Walsh now. And you know, you could probably see there's going to be a bit more urgency. There's going to be a bit more urgency from Klein, I would expect. The next three or four minutes now are very, very important. Brian O'Shea, who was one of the injury doubts for Cloyne coming into this one, is on the field now, replacing Mikey Cahill. So they've made three changes in that forward line, Cloyne, in a bid to find those scores to turn this game around. Fionn Keane beaten to that one and losing his uh, helmet in the process was Dave German, who was touched tight to his man. Cloyne looked to come again. Paddy O'Sullivan. It was neither here nor there in the end. Spilled by Cahill Wilson, but no one from Cloyne in close enough attendance to take advantage and Nooses Town can work their way out again. Here's Colm Deneen. Free man over on this near side. Has been picked out. Launched long by Michal Maxweeney, the captain. Breaking ball. Who will it favour? A bit of roguery going on there with a man lying on the ball, it seems. Yeah, that, that, but that, that's a big. This is this is a big decision here, Des, in the in the context of the game because, like, it's two eight. That's fourteen versus seventeen. There's there's nothing in the game. Even though Newcastle had totally dominated the the, the 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 first quarter of the second half, but like, you know, from from there's only one score in it, and anything could happen at this stage. But, you know, a ball that. You know, could have been, could have went either way there, and a free in to put it to a two-score game. It's a very, very important free for him. Oh, and a mistake on the free. That was a, a point gone a begging. And could that be costly? Come the end of it all. Well, that's an expensive. That could be an expensive miss. Newcastle Town, in the meantime, have uh, 
made a change David Buckley showed up well in the second half the man withdrawn Jack Mead I felt like he was caught after the ball was played he's picked out his midfield partner Ty Toomey though here's an opportunity for Toomey he'll take some catching here decision time does he go for goal he does and he's found the back of the net and that is a massive score from Ty Toomey for Newcestown Massive, massive score, There's, and you'd have to give credit, credit to Jack Mead, who actually spotted him, had drifted away with nobody on him, he hit a ball across the field, but he, he was in from the middle of the field and put a great score into the corner. Don Logan's probably a little bit unsighted and stuff like that, but a great score in the context of the game. And still maybe with stoppage time and added on time, there could be, what, maybe 12, 13 minutes to go, but is that the one, is that the score that puts uh, Newcestown into the quarterfinal, as we wonder? Yeah, and it was positive, wasn't it, for Ty Toomey? He could was, have taken uh, his uh, point. Yes, I must say, when I, when I saw him picking up the ball out, you know, around the middle of the field, I said, you know, he should tap it over, take the four points, but great credit him for taking it on. I think he was probably 21 yards out at least when he struck it, and that's why I'm saying that I think that Don Logan would be very disappointed at being beaten for 21 yards, but I think he was unsighted and probably couldn't get across to it. Six-point game in favour of Town now, and once again, maybe the reliance is on goals for Klein as the... Minutes and the seconds tick away. Ashley Walsh drops this one in. Dermot O'Sullivan can't get out to it in time. Newcestown with plenty of bodies around him. Brian Walsh has come up with a couple of impressive scores in this second half. And despite the appeals from Newcestown, no whistle blown by the referee. Here's Colm Deneen. Turns beautifully and there's that support runners there with him as well. There's the, uh, maybe the football tactics coming into the hurling game as well. Runners off the shoulder. It's dropped in by... The goal scorer Ty Toomey in towards that massive two-man forward line, inside forward line. Sean O'Donovan has lost sight of it. Keen Healy in there as well, along with Fionn Keane. And they're still there, and Healy takes his point. Yes, and I think that brings Keane Healy's sev seven or eight points out this session. He's been very, very effective, both from freeze and from play. But you, you mentioned about Don Logue and Dermot O'Sullivan and the service that they have given to Klein for years. The uh, cornerback, Brian Fleming, has given unbelievable service as well. He's been around as long as the boys have been and has been an outstanding cornerback and would never have got the, we said, the all other medals or the glory days that the two boys have got, but he has been a stalwart for Klein. Yeah, well mentioned. But they need someone to step up and grab the limelight in this last few minutes, Klein, or else their uh, the championship year is over. Sent in by Brian Minahan. Over the head of Dermot O'Sullivan, no one in behind him to capitalise though and Carl Wilson sharply off his line. And this drop down towards Daniel Toomey who scored 1-5 in that 2015 Premier Intermediate final route of Valley Rovers. He's the man who's come on to replace David Buckley. A dual senior club for uh, five years now, Newcestown, and what a job they've made of it as well. The hurlers getting to two quarterfinals, Randy McKilly to a point uh, a couple that's of years back as well that's right and I'd say if the game went on another couple of minutes Nusus Town would have got the result out of it you know but like so they, they, they have showed they have showed massive massive composure um, through the course of the game and I suppose as the game has gone on as we mentioned earlier on about the fitness levels of a football team maybe versus a hurling team in some respects I'll tell you what Sean O'Donovan hasn't got on a whole pile of ball in this uh, game but he's got three magnificent points out of what he has got well broken down that by Dermot O'Sullivan here's Brian Walsh Looking to race around the outside. He's been marked by two, though, and he's picked up an injury to add to uh, Klein's current woes. Newcestown send it long through Colm Deneen, and Sean O'Donovan has stepped away into space. Beautifully picked out, and Sean O'Donovan sends another one over the bar. Simple hurling, but so effective. Yeah, and they've, they've continued with the two men inside line, the two big guys, Sean O'Donovan um, in one side and um, Keane Healy on the other side. And um, I suppose, to be fair, the great crossfield ball, and he's well on top now, Sean O'Donovan. Dermot O'Sullivan couldn't get his hands on it. Carl Wilson plays it away. Newcestown, 118 against Killa, 117 against Canturk. Here's a ball that has to go into the back of the net from a clawing point of view. Might do yet, but hasn't done. And crucially, Newcestown survived that, but they put up 120 today. Very consistent in their scoring across the three games. Yes, 117 the last, and I think 118 against uh, Killers. Are, yeah. So they're very, very consistent, and they give you a good, honest effort every day they go out. They're very, very consistent, and you know there's, they'll be out again in a week's time playing football again, and they will give exactly the same effort next week. Well, Can Turk, Charleville, Father O'Neill, there's a lot of talk about them as potential winners of this uh, Senior A Hurling Championship, being the sides who all have maximum points from their two games so far. But Newcestone, as we would have thought at the start of the championship, very much in the mix here as well. 
Very tight game, as we mentioned, against uh, Canturk. It was just a, a two-point loss in a Coachford cracker, that one. And they've done this as well today without one of their most influential players, Cora Keane, the injured Cora Keane. If you're late joining us, the injury against Castlehaven for the footballers, unable to play today. But here is his uh, brother, Fionn Keane, popping up to show what he can do. And starting to pull away now. Yeah, it's been very, very... Very, very professional performance by Town in the second half. There's only four minutes left in the game, but they've totally, totally dominated it since half time and their full value at the moment for their lead. Yeah, Cloyne have had difficulty troubling that scoreboard in the second half. In truth, probably a few points they could have taken, but needing to go for goals in these late stages. And here they come again. Another man into the fray is uh, Kean Motherway. Gets his hand pass away, had been fouled though. Yeah, and there's a couple of massive scores uh, coming in. Coming like in Cora across Keane, we mentioned, yeah, and he is going to come on for the last few minutes. Wants a bit of action, I'd say. Wants to <laughs> have the stripe on his jersey to say that he played against Klein and, and, and won the game. But it, there's, a, there's a massive scoreline coming in in this grade at the moment. Um, Charleville 317 to Fumai 9 points. That's massive from a scoring point of view. And an even bigger result is coming in from Father O'Neill's 616 to 211 for Father O'Neill. So, you know, I don't know I don't know what the score is in the Kentuck game, but you'd have to be favouring both um, Father O'Neill's and Charleville without knowing the score from Kentuck. And we might get that before the game is over, but they're, they're two massive results. Uh, sorry, not results, but mm. two massive score lines at the moment. No one from Killer sending you that update, no? No, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get it in due course. We'll get it. <laughs> Two twenty to one fourteen, right, nine so points uh, in it. That doesn't sound like uh, as emphatic as uh, the scores that Charleville no, and no. Father O'Neill's are putting well, up at the moment. Six sixteen so is some scoring. I remember those Decky Decky Dalton and, and Decky Dalton and Billy Dunn. Now a little flash point here. Yeah, and a little bit of for Cloyne is Keith Dennehy a little bit of a flick back there now. There's nothing in it really. I'd be hoping now that there won't be anything in this. Uh, there's only two minutes left in the game and it's been very, very sporting on both sides. Um, I think the referee, Kieran is going to be going to his linesman for a word, but there's, there was nothing in it at all. I'd say he'll get a yellow card, at a I would expect. But we'll have to wait and see what happens here. But I suppose you'd have to give credit credit for uh, to Nusa's tone and the overall professionalism of how they have attacked the, the game in the second half. Um, you know, I think the 10 points at half time, they've won 11 scored after 58 minutes, or in total, 28 minutes of the second half. So they've been very, very professional. And, um, you know, they'll be, they're going to be difficult opponents for anybody that's in the quarterfinals. And it's a 10 point lead. It's interesting, Cora Keane has come in, considering we've got, what, 58, almost 59 minutes play, that the football match coming up. So many of these, I think there was 12 or 13 of the starting 15 will be in action for the footballers who uh, hammered Island Rovers in their first game before a six-point loss to Castlehaven. And it's Carberry Rangers next coming up for them. That's a huge one for them. Cora Keane on and uh, maybe another change or two to come before the full-time whistle. But a very impressive second half, as you said, and... Uh, just the type of performance when Kleiner showed up well in patches in that first half. The type of performance, again, that just uh, will have people looking at them, as we said, as potential winners of this grade. Yeah, and I mean, they, they have been, they've been very, very professional. Um, I suppose you'd have to say that, that Klein seemed to have probably ran out of steam, I suppose, in some respects. And uh, that's not down to their own fault. i say it's more the fitness levels of Newcastle, to be honest. Um, like, I suppose Klein would have been... For the, oh, he got a straight red. It's a bit unlucky there, like, because, you know... I suppose with the letter of the law and stuff like that, he did give him a tip of the holly and stuff like that, but it was, there was nothing major in it now, to be honest with it. But look, the reality is, I, I suppose, I, you know, in some respects, I can't, I can't fault the, 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 the linesman for doing his job. And yeah, Keaton, he sent off in the second half against Canturk. He won't see the end of this one either. And it brings a disappointing day to a, an early conclusion for the Cloyne midfielder. Maybe he'll get a, a consolation score or two before the end, though. Here's Dermot O'Sullivan. Passed up the opportunity of an easy score if he wanted one for himself. Uh, looked inside towards Noel Cahill. He'll be hoping uh, at least to maybe get the chance to finish on that hat trick of goals today. Took his two in the first half so well, Noel Cahill. There's Dusky, Dusky, uh, Dusky Fleming corner back there. Great catch there, and he's been a magnificent stalwart for Klein, the corner back. Played uh, nearly all he's holding in the full back line. They have a very strong relationship with Don Love down through the years. Another one dropped in around the houses. Cahill's got it. Now can he get his hurl to swing at it though? He's uh, under pressure. Three Town men around him. 
he will get the free for his troubles look he sees intention again he's such a, such a positive player in there yeah, but he'd first be intention always the goal if you can get it yeah absolutely oh, he'd be, and, and he'll be back here in a couple of weeks time as you mentioned in the Premier Minor and he'll be he'll be looking for goals that night as well and um, Don Logue is in charge of that minor team very well drilled uh, team as well and um, you know they, they, they have a, they'll have a big uh, say in the Premier 2 Championship in the minor this year Paddy O'Sullivan steps up drills it low and blocked on the line and Tiernan O'Sullivan is in and finishes it to the net yeah and if one of O'Sullivan didn't score it the other one made sure he did yeah, and it was a fantastic uh, shot from Paddy O'Sullivan and a great save on the line from the Newstown defence. Uh, and a good player there to follow up and finish the rebound. Well, have we written them off uh, too soon? It's a seven point game. We're in uh, additional time, of which there's a few minutes to go yet. If they could get another goal pretty quickly. Yeah, well, might look. Set the cat amongst the pigeons here. Colm Deneen, well watched though. Anything can happen in championship matches, as we've seen. I remember watching Midland and uh, Immaculate last year, and, and Midland got three goals in five minutes, and they were, I don't know, 12 or, 12 or 13 points down at the time, and brought it back to three. Oh. Colm Deneen, who's had a, a big showing for Town, team to have overcarried there. The important thing now for Newcastle is just to keep the head. Don't give away a silly freeze. You know, clients need to get three more goals if they're to win this game. So if they if they don't concede goals, you know, they'll see out the game. But don't give away a freeze. You know, force the, the client forwards to knock the ball over the bar if they want. But don't give away goals. Don't give away a freeze. Stand up, man up to the situation now because uh, they put themselves into a winning position and just see out the game. Yeah, it's 3 9 now. That free from Paddy O'Sullivan makes it for Klein. So that's 18 points, 121. For Nusa's Town, 24. Six point game. Ball in the hands of uh, Edmund Keneally, one of the miners. Or rather, uh, sent down by Paddy O'Sullivan. Paddy O'Sullivan. And Carl Wilson eyes on that one all the way. Nusa's Town racing out of defence once more. Good work by Jack Mead just to step into space, feeling he was caught late. No, I, I, genuinely, like it's only a tap, and I'll be honest with you. Now, what is happening here is that the, the I suppose the Nusa Town mentors on this side of the field have made, you know, I suppose, you know, uh, and it's very, very difficult for the referee. Yes, he got a little tap, but it was absolutely nothing in it, absolutely nothing. And you know, Kieran Regan's in a difficult position because by the letter of the law, it is a slight. It is with the hurley, which is the problem. Uh, but there was absolutely nothing in it at all. But it was more the Dementors and the Nusa Town sideline have made a big meal out of it. And Noel Cahill, the client man involved. And if there was a big crowd here, yeah. days, you wouldn't even hear it or notice it. This happens in all matches where fellas will get a tip here and a tip there. Now almost 64 minutes played. And Edmund Keneally, who won a minor Division 1 title last December, scored 13 points in the final against Canturk. It's a beautiful strike. And it's ended up in the back of the net. Exactly who got the final touch, I'm not entirely sure. But there were a few sniffing it. I, I, I think um, you're giving it to Carl Keane. Keane I think he'll be claiming <laughs> it I think definitely he'll be putting that on the, well, uh, it was either himself on the score the, sheet it was himself or the brother I think it yeah, was one well of the two of them I certainly, don't think, I certainly don't think it went all the way to the net anyway <laughs> <laughs> well, young Edmund Keneally might claim it but uh, a couple of Keanes are certainly claiming it a 2.21 big score put up by Town today an impressive score that and Jack Mead puts the uh, cherry on top with a massive score from distance Another who's had a prominent game today. And they didn't need to uh, move Luke Mead. I'm just watching at the moment is uh, in between his full back and half back line, just covering any ball that's uh, heading in in Dermot O'Sullivan and Paddy O'Sullivan's direction. Yeah, no need to move him, Des, because to be fair to them, the first five minutes of the second half, yeah. they totally dominated the game. And they, they scored seven points to two in that 15 minutes straight after half time, and there was no requirement to do it. Um, but he has been very, very impressive playing at centre back today. Is this something that we might see later on for the inter county team? Could, you know, we, we have a couple of um, requirements, I'd say, in the back line. If, if people aren't to be you know, looking at it, maybe Luke Mead could s solve one of those issues. Edmund Keneally, the latest to take a point. You're talking about Luke Mead playing in the backs. Colm Spillan, we've seen playing in the forwards. Doesn't matter these days, does it? <laughs> Good players can play anywhere. Good players can play anywhere. Thing. That's it. <laughs> well taken by uh, Colm Deneen, as we mentioned earlier. He's had a big showing for Nooses Town today. But uh, they really have put uh, 
their credentials on show in this second half. Big display against the Cloyne side that have given it what they've got, but have uh, come up short in this one. Uh, it's another one sent over the bar, this one from Sean O'Donovan. Yeah, 2.23 is very, very impressive scoring. Uh, 2.24 with that last one. To Cloyne's at 3.9, a high-scoring affair at uh, Parky Rin, but the victory is Nooses Towns, and now, as we mentioned, it's... Uh, Flick the switch for most of these new system players, and it's back to the straight back to the big ball game straight, next week. Straight over to the football now, and I suppose it's, it's just it's, it's the nature of it. But you know what a great way to be going into a football championship match, knowing that you're in the quarterfinals of the um, of the senior A hurling championship, which is great for them. And right, well, we'll uh, take a quick break, and we'll reflect on the main moments uh, very briefly, as we said, because Mark will be on his way over to Parky Cueve in a moment. We'll be back to you in a, a few minutes' time. to Parky Rin where we're reflecting on a very good second half showing in particular from Nooses Town who have uh, beaten Cloyne comfortably in the end on a scoreline of 2.24 to 3.9 to book their place in the quarterfinals of the 2020 Cork Senior A Hurling Championship and uh, impressive winners in the end Mark. Yeah and, and you know something Desa didn't look apparent at half time that you were going to have such a, a run away victory for Nooses Town in the second half but I think it's more the Nooses Town really up the game the, whatever Jim O'Sullivan said to him at halftime certainly had a desired effect and we couldn't have spotted that at halftime particularly the manner of it now I still felt that Town had more scores and had, scored, had made more chances um, but they were very very impressive in the second half and they've, they've sent out a strong message to anybody that they're not going to be any pushover in this championship Yeah a good spread of scores as well from their half back line through midfield and up to the forwards Yeah but I think Sean O'Donovan in the second mm -hmm. half got a better supply of ball uh, they stuck with the two men inside line and they, there was good delivery of ball from the back in the midfield as well Jack Mead was very very impressive in the overall context of the game as well and Keane Healy was unerring from freeze but I suppose the big highlight of the game the big decision that Newstone made was placing Luke O'Mead in the um, in the centre back position marking I suppose in some respects marking Paddy Sullivan and trying to quell his uh, contribution to Klein but I think more in context he got on an ocean of ball was very very dependable both in the air and on the ground and delivered great ball into the forwards as well so you know I, I think that was a big decision to take your key forward and put him back in centre back a big decision which has paid off in this occasion for Nusestown I think um, Nusestown manager Jim Russell, he'd be happy as well with how they shored things up defensively as well in the second half now I know there wasn't as much coming at them but having shipped the, the two goals in the first half they didn't look in too much trouble there in the second no I did not and you know you, 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 um, the kind of forward kind of um, uh, Noel Cahill sorry Noel Cahill had got two fantastic goals in the first half and they didn't uh, give him a sniff in the second half and then when you have the likes of Diarmuid O'Sullivan and Paddy O'Sullivan in the forwards as well I thought very very good defensive player from Newcastle but in the overall context I think there's, it was all about Newcastle's fitness I think in the second half and their willingness to I suppose get on the ball and win the dirty ball and then convert the scores Yeah you mentioned it during the game and we mentioned it once more because it's worth mentioning it's their fifth year as a dual senior club and most of those lads we, we reckon maybe 12-13 or the starting 15 maybe maybe even 14 are dual senior players and they'll roll on again and they'll play they'll line up for the footballers next week but what they've done as a club over the last uh, four or five years has been remarkable yeah, it's, it's, it's phenomenal to be honest with you there's, there's no other there's no other club I think in the county that has that amount of dual players that are playing hurling and football and particularly in this current uh, pandemic whereby you are playing hurling and football every second week and the county board is trying their best to be as fair to clubs as possible but when you see Cara Keane who had stitches you know and didn't start today and was willing to come on with five minutes with a big very important football match next weekend it just shows you the spirit that's in the club at this moment in time um, but the fact that they can keep the whole thing together and there's we say no real um, I suppose break up in terms of attitude and stuff for that and this fellas isn't playing and that fellas isn't playing I think it's tremendous um, tremendous tremendous attitude out of the Newstone club to to play at senior level in, in both grades and hurling and football yeah final score once again as we remind you Newstone 2-24 Cloyne 3-9 Newstone through along with Canturk uh, from this group to the quarterfinals of the Senior A Hurling Championship you've got the car keys 
Yeah. Ready to go? <laughs> on the road, <laughs> fed out now. <laughs> right, yeah. for Mark Landers, it's uh, from Parky Rin to Parky Creek. Middleton Douglas on the way uh, with the examiner. Delighted to bring you all this coverage in association with Dairy Gold and Co-op Superstores. From Mark and myself for now, thanks for watching and stay tuned for that big one coming from